All right, so we're making good progress and now it's time for our scenario three. And here we're gonna try to get into a little bit of complex flow. So we're gonna try to iterate over multiple elements. So we're gonna do this by verifying our menu tabs, text, as well as links. So for the first flow, we're gonna simply verify the text of all the menu tabs. This one is gonna be easier one. For the next flow, we're gonna make sure that all the tabs have the text and links matching with each other. Now this one is gonna be slightly complicated because we're gonna to have to compare the text and the link with each individual element. So again, the key learning over here is we're gonna be iterating over multiple elements. So you need to learn how to find multiple elements as well as iterate over it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario on our website. All right, so I'm back on our website and here you can see at the top, we have multiple tabs right here. Each of these tabs have a link attached to it. So let's say this one goes to the homepage, this one goes to the Cricket World Cup site, this one goes to the test championship and so on. So for the first test, you need to go ahead and simply get the text for each individual tab and verify the text with the expected text. So by the expected is, all you can do is simply create an array and store the text for all of these tabs. So once that text is stored in that array, you need to get the text from these tab elements and compare it with that array. So this one is flow one. The flow two is gonna be that you wanna make sure that let's say if I go to this particular tab, it should have this text and it should have the link as well attached to it, which is the cricketworldcup.com. So each of the tab should have its link matched to it. So let's say I'm gonna loop through this entire tab links I'm gonna to come to the first one. I'm gonna say, all right, for the first one, it should be ICC Cricket with the link icccricket.com. Second one should be Men's Cricket World Cup 2023 as the text and the link should be cricketworldcup.com and so on. So this one, you're gonna to have to loop through into the entire tabs and compare the text as well as the link with each other. So I will just leave it right there for you guys to kind of figure it out and try to implement the scenario on your own. If it's too complicated, simply go ahead and verify the text. But if you can, try to verify both the text and the link by looping through the whole thing. So go ahead and try this out on your own and then I will show you how to do this as well. All right, so let's go ahead and implement our scenario three. So I'm gonna head back to VS Code. Now right here, I'm gonna simply copy this entire text once again, and then we'll get rid of most of the things here which we don't need. And this one, we're gonna change this to verify menu tabs, text and link as our title. So I will say verify menu tabs, text and link. So we'll start off with our first flow, which is gonna be simply verifying the text. So for that, we're gonna need the text, which I already went ahead and got an access to. So this is the entire text for all of the tabs. I see cricket, Men's Cricket World Cup 2023, World Test Championship, and so on. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the locator for this entire tabs list. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna head over to our Chrome, do right click here and inspect. So we'll take a look at the parent of all of this. So the parent is site tabs list. So we have a nav class called site tabs, and within that we have a UL, within that we have all of those list items right here. So this one is the closest parent. So if I search for this, you can see I have site tab underscore underscore list, which is a unique node. So we will use this. So I'm gonna head back to VS Code. And right here, we're gonna simply add in our new locator, call this one, let's say list items. And then here I'm gonna do page.locator and simply add that in right here. Now this will only give me access to that parent. What I want instead is to loop through this whole thing, right? So I want access to each individual list item. So I can simply add an ally in front of that, which will give me entire list items. So this will return total five nodes. So let's head over to Chrome and see what that will look like. So if I simply do li in front of that, you can see now I'm getting five nodes back. And this five node is exactly the same five nodes that I need for all of these steps. All right, so that's good. Now all we need to do is get the text for all of these steps. So for that, it's actually pretty easy. You don't even have to loop through this. You can simply use a playwright command called get text or basically get all inner text. 
So we will do expect, and then we will do list items dot. You can see right here all in a text. There's also something called all text contents, which we can use as well. But in my case, I'm going to do all inner text. It will essentially find all the text in this list items. Now we'll try to run this and see whether this would work. I'm going to do dot to equal. And here I will compare it with my menu tabs. So for this all inner text, it's a promise. So add in that promise here. We're going to do await. Now let's try to run this and see whether this will work or not. So I'm going to do execute playwright test. All right, there you go. So we have one passing right here. So why is this working? Well, let's see what we get back from all inner text. Here, I'm going to do console log and simply paste in. So we are simply seeing what we get back from this list item all inner text. Let's run this again. There you go. The moment I ran that, here you can see this list items is giving me this entire thing. Oops, let's scroll down. It's giving me the exact same array that I have created right over here. So we are simply getting that array back by doing all inner text and we are comparing that inner text with the expected array that we had. And obviously both are matching, so it's working as expected. Now if I change to something else, let's say if I change this to 2024 and then try to run this, it should most likely fail for us. And there you go. As expected, this is failing. It's saying, hey, you were expecting 2024, but what it got back was 2023. So that means our assertion is working as expected. So this wasn't too difficult, right? I mean, we simply found all of the elements by doing list items. And then through that, we simply just do all inner text. And it was automatically able to store all the text in an array. And we simply compared that with our expected array. So that was pretty straightforward. However, the next piece is a little bit difficult because we not only have to verify the text, but we also have to verify the link for that particular uh, menu tab. So for that, we obviously first need the menu tab as well as the link. So let's go ahead and cover that flow as well. So here I'm going to go ahead and add in my expected tab links. So here I can say, let's say expected tab text links. I mean, you can name it anything. And this would be an array as well. And here I need to go ahead and add in each of my text as well as each of my link. So I already have that. So I'm simply going to paste it right here. So this is what it will look like. We have our text, which is ICC Cricket. This is exactly the same as what we have here. The only thing I added is created an object. So basically within that array, we have five objects now that have text as well as href as the property. Now we're going to simply go ahead and loop through each one of them as well as loop through each of our element and make sure that this matches with it. So I'm going to come to the first tab. I'm going to say, hey, is the tab have the text ICC Cricket? If yes, then it's going to verify that. Then it's going to check for that href. Does it have that? If it does, it will pass as well. And so on, it will go through all of them. So obviously, in order for me to loop through the whole thing, I need to create some sort of loop mechanism. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to use, let's say, a for off loop or any kind of loop that you want to use in. In this case, I can use, let's say, a for off. I'm going to say for constant. And here I can add in whatever I want. Let's say I can do, let's say, tab const tab of expected tab text links. And I'm going through each entries of this particular array. So I'm going to say dot entries. Now, by the way, this is how a for of loop works, guys. For example, it's going to loop through each individual tab. So here I created a variable called const tab, and it's going to loop through all the entries of this particular array. So if I hover over to this, you can see this tab has a number as the first property, which is the index. And then it has this object, which is text href. I can also directly write it like this as well. I can simply just do index comma list item or let's say tab item. So it would be individual tab item. So this is my index, which is the number. So index zero, index one, index two, and so on. And tab item is this tab, this tab, this tab, and so on. All right, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and try to go through each one of this. 
So we want to go through our first link, which is right here, or basically get access to a link, right? So the locator we have is this locator, site tabs Lee. To access the link, we need to access the href. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to go back to our site. So this is the list item. Within that, you can see there's an anchor tag, A class, which is that particular link that we need. So I can simply add an A, and that will give me access to that anchor tag. So we already have access to the individual list item by doing site tabs list, and then we can go through the entire list individually. Then we simply need to add in this anchor tag right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to our VS Code. So here I'm going to select link. So do const link. So this will be the individual link. So we have access to the list items. So I'm going to do list items. Now here, this is the interesting part because we need to access each individual index. So the reason for that is if I go back to Chrome here, so here now we have access to all of the anchor links that so can just keep looping through each one of them. So that's good. But one thing we need to do is when we're going through all of this, we need to access this specific one. And that's where kind of the challenge come in. Because here, when I loop through each one of them, I want to make sure that the first one is linked to this one. The second one is linked to that one. So every time I'm looping through it, I need to know the index for each individual one. Well, the good part is we can add the index in the list item. So here in the list, I can do dot colon and its child. And its child is basically providing an index to each one of them. And the moment I do one, you can see here, this is unique for me. I change this to, let's say two, it will go to the second one. There you go. If I do three, it goes to the third one. So this way I can verify each text with each link. So that's pretty much what we need to implement. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to VS Code. Now, by the way, this is, guys, a little bit on the advanced level, and I don't expect you to kind of know this right away. It does take quite a bit of time to get used to how to work through each individual uh, list item or basically looping through multiple items. I did just throw it as, in, as a challenge so that you guys can look into how to do this. If not, simply watch this video to figure it out. So we're going to do const link. And then here I will say my tab item, which is right here. Or actually, what was it called? It was list items right here, right? List items. So let's do list item. And maybe we can rename this to list item just to keep it consistent. So list items dot. And then right here, I have to provide the index. So with playwright, I can do dot init. There's a nice command for it, which takes in the index. We already have the index. Now within that, I'm going to say, go to my locator and then find the anchor tag from this. So let's see what's happening here. So basically, we am saying, hey, take this locator. This will return me how many nodes? Five nodes, right? Five nodes. From there, I want you to go to the nth index of that. The nth index is depending on the way I'm looping through this. When I looped the first one, it's going to go to the zeroth index, which is ICC Cricket. So this will get changed to zero. And then it's going to go to the anchor link for that one. So I will get that link for that thing, which is right here. So that's what I need. Next time it will loop. I'm going to go to the first one. It will get the text for this and link for this, which is again what I need. So that's pretty much what we are doing right over here. Now I simply go ahead and verify the, the text as well as verify the whatever the attribute. So this is actually my individual list item. So I can probably do something like await, expect my link to have text, to have text right here, and then give it list item dot text. So basically I'm saying, hey, the locator that you're finding, the locator, the first link that you find, which is this one, it should have the text ICC Cricket. After that, I want to do the same thing. I'm saying instead of text, I also want to make sure you get the href out of that. So I say to have attribute, which is another way we can do. This one will get me the text. This one will get me the attribute. The attribute I'm looking for is the href. So here I can type in href. And then href is going to be list item dot href. So let's see what we did. Well, first one is it's going to get the first link. The first link should have the text ICC Cricket. So basically, if we go back to Chrome, 
it's gonna get this link right here, right? Let's say the first link is right here. The link, it's gonna check the text. The text for that link is SEC Cricket, which is good. Then I'm saying for that same anchor link, I want you to now get the attribute href. It's gonna get this attribute href and it's gonna get the href value. So this is the value, which is SEC Cricket homepage. It's gonna come back and compare it with our expected ICC Cricket href with this particular thing right here. Let's run this to make sure this works. I'm going to do execute play right test. And I have to close the previous runs and then run it again. All right, so we just ran it and it is failing. The reason it's failing is because I forgot to update this 2024. So let's quickly do the update. So this should be 2023. Close our previous run and run it again. And there you go, our test successfully passed. Look at that, pretty nice. To make sure this works, let's change our link. So maybe T21 World Cup, maybe I can just change it to that. Let's run this, this time our href verification should fail. So let's run that. And it's taking longer because our session failed. And here you can see it's saying, hey, you were saying it should be T21 World Cup, but what I got was T20 World Cup. So clearly this is wrong. So as expected, our test is failing. All right, so I know that was a lot and we covered quite a bit of things over here. And this is again on the advanced level, guys. I don't expect you all to just know this right away. It does take quite a bit of playing around with it to understand how all of this works. So watch this video multiple times to really understand what we did. The first one was pretty straightforward. We simply verified the text by doing dot all inner text, which gave us text in an array format and we compared that array with our expected array. After that, we kind of change it by doing text and href. And again, remember, you can keep adding as many different properties you want to uh, verify over here as well. In our case, we verified it for text and href. We loop through each individual list item or basically the tab item. Then from there, we got the index for this because we are looping through this. We got the first index. From there, we got the locator because we want to verify the link. So we got that anchor locator. We basically changed everything together or chained everything together. And once that was done, we simply just did our assertion to have text and to have attribute. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. I know it was a complex one. So try to watch it multiple times to really understand how this was implemented and also try to do this implementation on your own. That's it for now. Let's head over to our next scenario to see what we will cover.